What's up guys, it's Brody here with Men Vs Movies and I have just seen Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. Holy shit guys, if you know me at all, you know I've been looking forward to this movie for a decent amount of time and now that I have finally seen it, I saw it last night in Indianapolis uh, at a fan screening and it's really good. It's really, really, really good, which is kind of surprising because when you hype something up this much, you kind of expect it to not meet your expectations, but it met my expectations and it exceeded it in places. I am so, so happy to tell you that this is a good movie. I guess the first place to start when it comes to what made this movie so good for me is the cast. You've got to start with Ben Affleck as the Batman. Ben Affleck was someone who, as you all know, people were a little, I guess, anxious about playing Batman. I've always been kind of a proponent of it and this kind of proves exactly why I was for the idea. He is Stella as Batman. Even as Bruce Wayne, he just sells it. You don't even notice you're watching Ben Affleck at this point. I, I keep wanting to say Bruce Wayne because he just sells the role so well. He is brutal, he is violent, he doesn't like show any mercy, and he's just very narrow-minded in his quest, which is to find and take out Superman. Speaking of Superman, Superman is played once again by Henry Cavill. He seems a lot more comfortable in the role this time around. He, he has a lot more to work with in this script and he just builds upon the performance that he laid the, the groundwork for in Man of Steel. He has really great chemistry with Amy Adams, which is a critique I had of Man of Steel that they didn't really gel too well. This time, it, you, you buy it. You buy that Clark Kent slash Superman loves Lois Lane. And that's really kind of a big, big part of this movie. It's the backbone, I guess, of Superman's story in this movie. Henry Cavill just knocks it out of the park. And then you've got Wonder Woman, who's played by Gal Gadot, and this is like Wonder Woman's first cinematic appearance. People were a little skeptical about Gal Gadot's casting, myself included, I didn't really know what to expect. But she's kind of got a special screen presence in this movie, and she kind of lights up the, any scene that she's in, and it's, it's, it's something uh, I don't think a lot of people expect from her, but it's, it's really cool. And we come to Jesse Eisenberg, who is probably my favorite member of the cast. Why is he my favorite member of the cast? Because he is playing Lex Luthor, the villain of the movie, and he steals the show, guys. Once again, another piece of casting that people were a little iffy on, but wow, just wow. This may be one of my favorite comic book villain performances ever. He really finds a way to balance the genius and the psychopath in Lex Luthor and do it in a way that's so deliciously entertaining. He just chews scenery in the best possible way. But at the same time, he's got like a complexity to him. You almost feel sorry for the guy and his motivations aren't completely arbitrary. They're kind of fleshed out and you kind of start to understand where he's coming from. But at the same time, he goes too far and that's why he's the villain. The supporting cast is all really, really top notch as well. You have Lawrence Fishburne returning as Perry White and he does a really, really good job. He's a little more Perry White in this movie than he was in Man of Steel, where he was just sort of angry Lawrence Fishburne. This time around, he kind of commits to the role a bit more. You got Amy Adams as Lois Lane, and as I said before with Henry Cavill, the two of them just work really well together, and they're sort of the backbone emotionally of Superman's arc in this movie. She's definitely more convincing as Lois Lane in this movie. And you got Jeremy Irons as Alfred. Wow, this is this is better than Michael Caine's Alfred, I'm gonna say it, because he, he has this relationship with with Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne. It, it kind of reminds you of the animated series, if you've watched that. It's it kind of like this witty banter between the two of them. He's kind of snarky, he's kind of pompous, but in a very charming way. And you can tell he loves Bruce, and that's what matters when it comes to Alfred. And then you've got a new character, Senator Finch, played by Holly Hunter. She goes in a direction that you probably wouldn't expect by watching the trailers, but it's, it's definitely a very good performance. And that about does it for the cast. But the other aspect of this movie that kind of shines to me was the story by uh, Chris Terrio and David S. Goya. I don't think David Goya was involved too much in the final draft. I think it was mainly Chris Terrio, but they have a way of like tying everything together thematically in this movie that was just really satisfying to me. There are like moments that they foreshadow at the beginning that you don't realize are foreshadowing until you get to maybe the third act, which is maybe two hours later. And then you go, oh, of course, they set that up. It's really rewarding as an audience member when you see something that cohesively tied together. And I just think Chris Terrio really um, fucked me in the ass. Chris Terrio solidifies himself here as a really, really top-notch action writer, which who would have thought the writer of Argo would be an action writer this time now? There's a lot of really genuine emotion in the movie. There's one scene that actually got me to tear up a little bit, and that sounds a little hokey, but 
it's not an emotionally manipulative scene. It's not something that you typically cry at. It was just a couple of words said by a character that was completely and utterly heartbreaking. And I think it's a testament to Chris Terrio as a writer that it was that effective. I think something that caught me off guard as well was just how comic booky this movie is. I mean, it's a comic book movie, but a lot of people have been saying DC has been afraid to sort of go down to the nitty gritty comic booky stuff that made the comic books what they are. And they do that in full force in this movie. There's one scene, it's kind of a teaser for Justice League, and everyone was shocked. Everyone was shocked that it happened, let alone what happened in the scene. And just little moments like that, that really give you an idea of how committed to making this DC Universe work uh, Warner Brothers is. And I appreciated that as a comic book fan. The big man himself, Zack Snyder, the director, and I honestly think this is his best movie since Watchmen, maybe. This movie's a little more like Watchmen than Man of Steel, mainly because of how dark it is and just how many characters are sort of moving through the plot. The imagery in this movie is really breathtaking, especially when it's paired with the score by Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL. There are a couple of sequences where there's no dialogue and there's no real foley at all. It's just the score and then a bit of like Zack Snyder slow-mo and Oh, it gets you pumped up. It gets you ready for the, like, for the ensuing chaos. If I didn't have any problems with the movie, it would probably come down to some of the editing. Earlier on in maybe the first act and a half of the movie, some of the editing is very choppy, and you jump from scene to scene in a very arbitrary way that kind of makes them feel more like vignettes. But later on, that makes a bit more sense when you get to the resolution. But personally, for me, it kind of broke the narrative flow a little bit. And then towards the end as well, there was some editing issues where the ending kind of climaxed and then anti-climaxed and then climaxed and anti-climaxed a couple of times in, an, in a way reminiscent of something like Return of the King where you think it's ending and then there's something else that's ending and then there's something else that's ending. And it's not necessarily bad, it's just kind of jarring if you're not expecting it. And that's about it guys. If I had to give this movie a score, I would probably, I'm leaning towards a 4.5 out of 5 at the moment. It just for me personally, as a fan of these characters and a fan of this universe, it did everything I was hoping it would do. And in some cases it exceeded my expectations. So definitely check it out, give it a try, go in with an open mind, and I swear to God, you're gonna have fun with this thing. So that about wraps it up guys. If you've liked this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Even if you didn't like it, you know, just say, go check out this jackass talking about Batman vs Superman. Also, we do a movie podcast where we talk about movie news and trailers and all that good stuff. And you can check that out on iTunes. And if you don't want to do that, you can also watch it here on YouTube. We post it every week. And if you want to follow me personally, you can follow me at B Cerevelli on Twitter, but I never use it. So you'd probably be better off following me on LinkedIn. Uh, thanks everyone. Have a good one.